Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Last time, when we left off, we had finally escaped Taris and landed on Dantooine, which is a very exciting development, because it means our main character is finally done holding levels and being weak. We're going to get our Jedi classes, and all that experience we've saved is going to pay off in spades. Let's get after it. We're at the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine. Our directive is pretty simple. It's to follow Bastila. You'll meet with the council, but you know me. Gotta check everything else out first. I cannot render assistance, citizen. Move along. I cannot render assistance, citizen. Move along. None of these seem to go anywhere. I didn't want to go into the Ebon Hawk. Yeah, you can't change party members either. Jedi. Dantooine is one of our last refuges. The Sith hunt us everywhere. Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Please do not disturb me. I have pressing matters at hand. Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Aerotech Mercantile. Kratos Yurkow. Yikukuno, no I assume you are not a member of the Order, if you were not wearing the traditional garb of the Jedi. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Kratos Yurkow, proprietor of the general store here on Dantooine. Not much to look at now, I'll admit, but I'm in on the ground floor. I mean, look at this planet. Majestic fields, rolling plains, wide open terra firma, elbow. That's what people want. Once word gets out, there are settlers and tourists from the galactic core just dying to come here. And guess who'll be waiting for them? Not that blasted Zerker Corp, that's for sure. Not this time, no sir. This time it'll be Kratos Yurko who makes the big bucks. But listen to me. You didn't come here to listen to my ramblings on the evils of the Zerker Corp, I'll bet. What can I do for you? What do you have against the Zerka Corporation? I'm hearing a rather disturbing rattle in my PC case. Give me a second. Don't get me started on Zerka Corp. They've got a monopoly on half the galaxy already, and they do everything they can to keep anyone else from getting a foothold in their territory. Extortion, bribing officials and government, tipple bats. Not to mention driving up prices on essentials like food and water on distant colonies. I've heard stories of them letting people starve to death because they couldn't afford their jacked up prices. And since they've thrown themselves in with the Sith, things have only gotten worse. Worse? How has it gotten worse? The Sith are tangled up in an expensive war with the Republic. They need supplies, equipment, resources. There's lots of opportunities for a company with no morals like Zerker Corp to make some major profits. Malak has given them exclusive trading rights wherever the Sith have control. It's bad enough they're helping to finance the Sith war effort, but I've heard rumors of even worse stuff. Slaving, pillaging planets of their resources, genocide of indigenous species. The Sith and Zerka Corp seem like a perfect match to me. Ah, uh, listen to me going on. You didn't come here to listen. Do you mean Zerka Corp are allied with the Sith? Same dialogue. I'd like to see what you have for sale. Excellent. As always, my selection is somewhat limited. Zerka Corp has a monopoly on some of the suppliers. But I'm sure you'll find all of my inventory is of the highest quality. And I've got a few special items you won't find anywhere else. Alright, so far, we've seen all this before. Battle armor is new. Feats required. Armor proficiency heavy. Defense bonus 8, max dexterity bonus plus 1. This isn't the heaviest of armor, but it comes close. Designed for heavy militias, it has the protection needed to keep a soldier alive during ranged combat with massive weapons. Sanasiki's Blade. Feats required weapon proficiency melee weapons. Damage physical 3 to 12. Ion plus 3 versus droid. Critical threat 19 to 20 plus 2 times 2. 
balanced, plus two, plus zero, versus two weapon penalty if used in the offhand. Attack modifier, plus two, special, upgradable melee. Sanasiki used this weapon to kill Nelenik, a Zabrik who assassinated the Achani High Protector with battle droids. Cortosis protects the blade against lightsaber sparring damage, while energy cells disrupt droid opponents. Jurgen Kalta's Assault Rifle. Feats required weapon proficiency, blaster rifle, damage, energy 1 through 8, ion plus 1 through 6 versus droid, range 28 meters, critical threat 19 to 20 times 2, attack modifier plus 3, special upgradable ranged. Jurgen Kalta wanted to make a big noise in the galaxy. If it was the screams of his enemies, all the better. This weapon was his favorite because it shared his adaptability. Stealth Field Reinforcement. Feats required Armor Proficiency Light. Skills Stealth plus 8. Restricted, not usable by Wookiees. A very powerful item designed to both regulate stealth field emissions and improve the user's perception of the field while in stealth mode. Interface Band. <clears throat> Damage Resistance. Resist 5 versus Sonic. Skills Computer Use plus 2. Demolitions plus 2. Security plus 2. Restricted, not usable by Wookiees. This item provides a mental interface to a store of information of, on electronic systems common to security, demolitions, and general computing functions. Breath Mask. Feats required armor proficiency medium, immunity poison, restricted, not usable by Wookiees. This is standard issue gear for Republic forces and most professional soldiers protecting against a variety of gas-based attacks. Infiltrator Gloves. Skills, Computer Use plus 4, Security plus 4, Dexterity plus 1. These gloves are equipped with an advanced artificial intelligence unit that the wearer can use to tap into nearby computer systems through cables or wireless transmission. The system also stabilizes the wearer's hands for fine detail work. CNS Strength Enhancer. Saves all plus 2, Strength plus 2. An experimental system that amplifies power signals along the length of the central nervous system. This generator, attached to a belt, provides greater impulses to all muscles, as well as a resistance to all sorts of perturbations of the user's system. Calrissian's Utility Belt. Skills Computer Use plus 3, Demolitions plus 3, Repair plus 3, Security plus 3. Galderan Calrissian's name was something of a liability after he became infamous for running an unsanctioned smuggling ring within hut space. Eventually cornered, he had to pawn even his personal items to avoid being the last Calrissian. The user must have paid points into the demolitions and security skills to gain the respective benefits from this belt. Retinal Comblad Implant. Feats required, Implant Level 2, Immunity Critical Hits, Skills Awareness Plus 1. This ocular implant greatly increases visual acuity, allowing the user to better track enemy movement in combat. General awareness will improve as well. Alright, that's everything. Let's see who else is in here. I'm sorry, human. I am unable to render assistance at this time. I'm sorry, human. I am unable to render assistance. Karal Kar. I greet you, human. I am Karal Kar, owner of this outpost of Aerotech Droids Incorporated. My protocol droids are not programmed to interact with customers, so should you desire assistance, I can aid you. Let me see what you have in stock. Explore my inventory at your convenience. Settler families have purchased all my droids, but I have many upgrades and other wares for purchase. Droid Heavy Plating Type 1. Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 1, Defense Bonus 9. Originally used on Starship hulls, Durasteel is the best protection available for droids. This particular variant of the alloy is the standard for mass production heavy combat droids. Droid Medium Plating Type 1. Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 1, Defense Bonus 4. Developed by engineer Hoot Kalen, this plating relies more on deflecting angles than exotic alloys. Cost can be prohibitive, though this is the most affordable model of the type. Droid Light Plating Type 3. Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 3, Defense Bonus 5. The strongest of the light grade plating, this is the best protection most individuals consider purchasing for droids, not actively in a class intended for combat. Droid light plating type 2 and 1 we've seen. Basic targeting computer, I think is new. Feats required droid upgrade class 1, bonus feat, weapon focus, blaster pistol. Battle droids come factory ready for combat, but it is still wise to invest in targeting computer upgrades to optimize performance at range. Cost rises with quality as always. Sensor probe. 
Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 1, Skills, Demolitions plus 2. This basic probe improves the droid's demolitions capabilities, allowing for more sensitive adjustments of volatile substances. A droid must have basic demolition software paid points into the skill to benefit from this item. I've seen Computer Probe. Security Interface Tool. Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 1, Skills Security plus 2. Pioneered by Toshan Gant, this is the basic droid security breaker in use across the galaxy. Gant did most of his research for the Republic military after private efforts led to his imprisonment. A droid must have basic security software paid points into the skill to benefit from this item. Environment Shield Level 1. Feats required Droid Upgrade Class 1, uses 10 out of 10. Deflection, Energy, Sonic, Cold, Heat, 20 points total. Duration, 20, 200 seconds or max damage taken. Initially designed to resist the harsh conditions of factory floors, these shields provide a droid with basic protection against a broad array of effects. The power drain is significant, however, and they must be replaced regularly. Energy shield level 1. Feats required droid upgrade class 1, uses 10 out of 10. Deflection, energy 20 points, duration 200 seconds, or max damage taken. This is a basic model energy shield universally applicable to most droids. The power drain is significant, however, and units like this must be replaced regularly. I've seen the stun ray. I've seen the shield disruptor. I'm sorry, human. I am unable to render assistance at this time. Alright, that's everyone in there. It is relaxing to come outside and enjoy the fresh air once in a while. It relieves stress. Dantooine has a splendid environment. I would hate to see it damaged by too many settlers. The Cap Hounds have been very active of late. The settlers feel they are becoming more dangerous. Dantooine has a splendid environment. I would hate to see it Lure damaged Arca by too many Subas. settlers. Greetings, Sentient. May I take a moment of your time for a question? Go ahead. I represent a human citizen of Dantooine by the name of Runyo Atsulam. His ranch has had considerable difficulty with Mandalorian raiders for many years. His young daughter was kidnapped by those raiders many years ago and has not been returned. Might you have news of her? Her name is Sasha. Sorry, I have no idea who you're talking about. Do you actually believe she's still alive? Is there a reward for this news? Well, just number one. Ah, uh, that is too bad. I shall have to continue my search. Are problems with Mandalorians common on Dantooine? I understand they are, though I know little of the history behind this conflict. Someone native to this planet could tell you more. Isn't this something the local authorities should handle? Dantooine has little in the way of local authorities sentient. I asked the Jedi of the Enclave to intervene, but they have far more pressing concerns to attend to. As is often the way on this planet, if a citizen wishes to accomplish something, they must seek to do it themselves. Is there anything of interest on Dantooine that you can tell me about? There is no large urban center on Dantooine, if that's what interests you. I find the variety and number of natural habitats to be most intriguing, however. If you get the chance, I would urge you to explore the planet's ranges in more detail. They are quite beautiful. I'll keep my eye out for your girl. I would appreciate that sentience. Alright, fair enough. Welcome to the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine. I do not believe we know each other. My name is Deezra Lur Jada. You may call me Deezra. I have not heard of any new apprentices being accepted for training recently. What brings you to this place, if I may ask? I came here with Bastila. My business here is my own. I came here with Bastila. Yes, of course, I should have known. I have only heard a little of how she escaped the destruction of Taris. Tell me, did she save you from that planet as well? She didn't save me. We worked together to escape Taris. Get your story straight, I'm the one who saved her. Uh, we worked together. Oh, I see. Well, I meant no offense, of course. In any case, it is good to have her back here on Dantooine again. We were afraid Malak had captured her. I hope you enjoy your time here on Dantooine. May the Force be with you. Okay, he was nice. Let's just head 
get into here. Trucking along. Jedi. I hear that the Sith torture Jedi prisoners until they give in to the dark side. I hope that never happens to me. I heard that the Sith have destroyed Taurus. This bodes ill for us. Dantooine is one of our last refuges. The Sith hunt us everywhere. I fear it is only a matter of time before the Sith find us here, too. Good day to you. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you at the moment. I apologize. Hmm. If you are seeking information, perhaps the Jedi Council will help. I'm afraid I cannot. I heard that the Sith have destroyed... Belaya. You there, Padawan. Why are you not wearing the customary robes of the Jedi? Do you mock the honor traditions of our order? Are you a Jedi? I believe you are mistaken. I am not a Padawan. I am Doug Tetra. I came here with Bastila. Back off. I'm no Padawan. I'm Doug Tetra. I just came here with Bastila. Be polite. Number two. Bastila. I have heard of her. They say she has already mastered the art of battle meditation. Remarkable in one so young. Though I've heard she has a foolish pride in her own talents. But as for you, you claim you are not a Padawan? I find this hard to believe. The Force is strong within you. I can feel its presence. If this is some type of jest, it is in very poor taste. The Jedi Order is not a subject for jokes. I am telling you the truth. I didn't come here to be scolded by you. I'm telling you the truth. Please forgive the abruptness with which I first greeted you. It was harsh and perhaps unfair. My master often warns me that I must learn to control my emotions. I see I have much left to learn. I wish you a pleasant stay here on Dantooine. May the Force be with you. Mm hmm What else do we have? Jedi droid. The Council has decreed you must not leave the Enclave. Please return to your room. The Council has decreed you must not leave the Enclave. Please return to your room. Alright, well, we're not taking the Enclave exit. If you are seeking information, perhaps the Jedi Council will help. I'm afraid I cannot. I hear that the Sith have defeated another Republic battle fleet. I do not know how much longer the Republic can last. I fear it's only a matter of time before the Sith find us here, too. It is relaxing to come outside and enjoy the fresh air once in a while. It really I cannot render assistance, citizen. Move along. All right, fine. Sola. You kukumo, no va mulera. Sola player about you. I dabble in it from time to time myself. Here for a game. Who are you? I am Sola, and to be perfectly blunt, my business is my own. I do offer you, though, the company of my time for a game or two of Pazak. Do you care for a hand? Not right now. Ah, well. Come back if you ever feel up to a game. Alright, well. Care to have a hand of Pazak with me? Let me see. Um, I need to check if this guy... Um... If there's a progression or not, you know what I mean. Okay, he will play six total matches and we can win his cards. So, yeah, we do need to play. Sure, I'll play. Let's get started then. 120 credits. Okay, so, generally the lower cards are going to be better, plus, and the minus cards are going to be better than the, uh, plus or minus is best. So yeah, this is a much better side deck, so we'll roll with it. Flip hand card. Oh, nice. Uh, I'll end turn there, that's good enough. do it. 
He stood with a 19, huh? That last game was closer than it seemed. Want to try it again? Not right now. Oh well. Come back if you ever feel up to a game. Yeah, we'll just... Time Lord, that stuff. Sorry, I have to answer a work email. Good Lord. Sorry about that. Oh, Sola. Oh, come on. All right. I can live with that. Are you serious? I just gave him a one. That's some bogus ass nonsense. Thank you. 
You piece of shit. Oh. I mean, I have to win six in a row. I fucking hate this. Oh. Just <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it's a little, more than a little annoying. Side deck every reload, that's nice. <clears throat> Do I burn a card to guarantee a tie? Should have. Oh well. Still five. I do like that it automatically gives you the maximum bet, too. That's nice. Are you serious? <clears throat> okay. I suppose you made up for it. God 
damn it. One two in a row yet ever against any opponent. I'm not sure I have. Oh. seems to draw 10 when he draws on a 15. God damn it. Oh. Why bother letting me win two sets if you're just gonna snatch it away at the third one? Oh, number is still four. Jiddle. stand on. It's hard to beat. You piece of shit. Unbelievable. The number is still four. Oh. dialogue will change on the last match, of course, but we have to win two more before we're there. Let's not get out over the tips of our skis, so to speak. Oh, 
out of 16. It's like blackjack except you know the general proposit oh, the generally smart proposition seems to be to hit up to 18 and then stand. Oh. Actually maybe I, I'm thinking about it all wrong. I should hit up to 16 because the target is 20. So I should drop it by one. so much. Maybe now that I have my head screwed on right, I'll do a little better. Of course not if he keeps getting 20s. Still three.
Hey. I seem to have run out of funds. If you wish to play again, I could wager these cards instead. Do you wish to play? Not right now. Alright, there we go. Last one, first card. Oh, fuck you. Mujashak Ba. I guess it doesn't matter if I lose now. I don't even know. Mujashak Ba. Unless I lose my cards instead. I didn't pay attention to that. It would have said lost items lost, though. guarantee a tie. Just let me win the set. Let it be over. Haven't I been patient enough? Enough, Pazak. God damn it. Let it be over. Oh, 
he must not have any decent minuses. Let me win the last set for fuck's sake. God damn it! Come on! Come on! This is torment! Oh, thank you. You're truly a great Pazak player. I don't see how I can possibly beat you. The token of my appreciation for games well played, please take these cards. Perhaps it will serve you better than they did me. Items received. Thank goodness. Much assured that one day I will, though. Is there anything else you wish? Not right now. Alright. Thank goodness that's finally over. I hate Pazak so much. Med pack and antidote kit. Alan Matale. Why are you bothering me? I'm here to speak with the council, not some servant. Please leave, or I shall be forced to tell the council of your rude behavior. Why are you bo- Alright. We found a douchebag. Alright, let's head through here now. Training room. Training computer, workbench. Well, I'm interested in the workbench. Accessing information database. Data link confirmed. Beginning training orientation. Continue. Welcome, Sentient. It is important for the peace and harmony of all beings that the many paths of the Jedi Order be understood. Only through knowledge can all see the truth of the Force. Jedi Guardians train for battle and physical prowess. In contrast, Jedi Consulars seek to master the awesome power of the Force. Jedi Sentinels seek to find a balance between these two extremes. Tell me more about the Jedi Guardian. Jedi Guardians battle against the forces of evil and the dark side. They focus on combat training and masterful use of the lightsaber. Basic class attributes, 10 vitality per level, 4 force points per level, slow skill progression, fast feat progression. Jedi Guardians gain the force jump feat automatically. This feat allows them to instantly close the distance and attack an opponent within 10 meters. We're gonna be a consular, just FYI, but tell me more about the Jedi Sentinel. Jedi Sentinels ferret out deceit and injustice, bringing them to light. They strike a balance between the physical and mental disciplines of the Jedi Order. Basic class attributes, 8 vitality per level, 6 force points per level, average skill progression, slow feat progression. Jedi Sentinels gain the Jedi Immunity feat automatically. This makes them immune to fear. Tell me more about the Jedi Consular. Jedi Consulars seek to bring balance to the universe. They focus less on physical combat and more on mental disciplines in order to augment their mastery of the Force. Basic class attributes. 6 vitality per level, 8 force points per level, slow skill progression, slow feat progression. Jedi Consulars gain the Force Focus feat automatically. This feat makes it harder for opponents to resist their Force powers. Show me a statistical comparison of all three classes. Guardian, 10 vitality, 4 force points per level. Consular, 6 vitality, 8 force points per level. Sentinel, 8 vitality, 6 force points per level. Log off. Alright. 
That leaves the council chamber. Finally, let's head in. Ah, so you are the one who rescued Bastila. It is appropriate you are here. We have been discussing your rather special case. I am Jar, a member of the Jedi Council. With me are Master Vruk, Master Vandar, and of course the chronicler of our academy, Master Dorak. Padawan Bastila, I am sure you are already familiar with. Isn't the Jedi Council on Coruscant? What do you want from me? So you've drawn me into your little trap, Bastila, what now? I've got some questions for all of you. Let's start with, isn't the Jedi Council on Coruscant? Yes, the High Council of the Jedi Order is on Coruscant, but we are the Council in charge of the training facility here on Dantooine. What do you want from me? I've got some questions for all of you. Indeed, I am sure that you do. I assure you that we will have answers for you. Why am I a special case? Why am I here? Why did the Sith destroy Taris? Start with that one. Darth Malak seeks to destroy the Jedi Order. Our most effective weapon, perhaps our only hope, is Bastila's skill with battle meditation. With this power, she can swing the tide of nearly any battle in our favor. Which is why Malak was seeking her so fervently. And if he could not have her, he would see her destroyed. Taris was just in the way. We need Bastila in our fight against the Sith. Indeed, we need every Jedi we can muster, since the Sith have been hunting us down at every opportunity, which brings us to you. Me? What about me? I feel I'm not going to like this. What about me? Bastila tells us you are strong in the Force. We are considering you for Jedi training. Nothing would give me greater honor than learning the ways of the Jedi. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Strong in the Force? Let's ask the question first. Master Jar speaks out of turn, perhaps. We need indisputable proof of your strong affinity to the Force before we would even consider accepting you for training. Proof? Surely the entire Council can feel the strength of the Force within this man. And I've already related to you the events that took place on Terrace. Perhaps it was simple luck. We both know there is no luck. There is only the Force. We all feel the power in Bastila's companion, though it is wild and untamed. Now that this power has begun to manifest itself, can we safely ignore it? The Jedi training is long and difficult, even when working with a young and open mind. Teaching a child is hard. How much harder will it be for an adult to learn the ways of the Jedi? I am willing to try my best. I am ready to accept the training and my age has nothing to do with it. Lie. Of course, great Jedi, I will learn your ways and follow the light. <laughs> I'm willing to try my best. Traditionally, the Jedi do not accept adults for training, though there are rare exceptions in the history of our order. But you are a special case. I agree with Master Dorak. Many of our own pupils are leaving the Jedi Order to follow the Sith teachings. We need recruits to stand against Malak. With Revan dead... Are you certain Revan is truly dead? What if we undertake to train this one and the Dark Lord should return? We should discuss this matter more fully in private. Bastila, you and your companion must go. This is a matter for the Council alone. As you wish, Master Vandar. We shall return to the Ebon Hawk and leave you to your deliberations. Oh, I hope it doesn't cut to another movie, but I bet it will. We'll see on the other side if it does. One movie to splice, Dantooine Vision. The dark side is strong in this place. I can feel its power. His face is normal. Is this wise? The ancient Jedi sealed this archway. If we pass beyond this door, we can never go back. The Order will surely banish us. Are the secrets of the Star Forge so valuable? 
Can its power truly be worth the risk? It's getting stranger by the minute. First Bastila comes out looking like she saw a ghost, and now you. Well, Bastila did mention that you should go to the council chambers before she left. It's no doubt urgent, so you shouldn't keep them waiting. Did she say anything else? Or I had a rough night. Let's go. Did she say anything else? No, she didn't. She didn't seem well, as I recall, and for that matter, neither do you. Are you all right? I had a rough night. Let's go. You got it. Oh, I get to choose members. I'm gonna bring Candorus and Zalbar for now, since Bastila is grayed out. Anyway, I'll splice in the movie. I think I've figured out a way to do that pretty reliably. So, before I do anything else, let's go hit that workbench. I've been excited to find, to uh, tweak Candorus's blaster, and I haven't gotten a chance. Hair trigger, yay! And before long, I'll be more than willing to strip off Bendix's blaster, but not quite yet. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have shared a dream. A vision of Malak and Revan in the ancient ruins here on Dantooine. These ruins have long been known to us, but we believe them to be merely burial mounds. Perhaps they're more than we first suspected, if Revan and Malak found something there. Yes, they seem to be searching for something. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know what Bastila is talking about. What? How would Bastila know if we shared a dream? She says she has felt your presence within the dream. The presence she has felt within you ever since... Master Vandar. Ever since Taurus. It is not unknown for this to happen between two people strong in the Force. Bastila has described this shared dream to the Council in great detail. We feel it is more than a dream. It is a vision. The Force is acting through you, as it acts through Bastila. I trust in your greater wisdom. I'm having visions now. You and Bastila share a powerful connection to the Force. And each other. This is not unheard of. Connections often form between master and student. But rarely does a bond develop so quickly. Whatever dangers may lie ahead, we cannot ignore the destiny that has brought you and Bastila here to us, together. What are you talking about? Are you saying I'm joined with her? Let's keep it generic. What are you talking about? You and she are linked, as is your fate to hers. Together, you two may be able to stop Darth Malak and the Sith. Well, do not let your head be filled with visions of glory and power. Such thoughts are the path to the dark side. The way of the light is long and difficult, as you must learn. Are you ready for such hardship? Of course, Masters, I seek to follow the light. Yes, I'm ready for whatever awaits me. I will try my best. One. I'm ready. Understand that there is little choice in this matter, for you or us. Across the galaxy, the numbers of our order dwindle. We have sent many Jedi in quest of a way to thwart Malak's advance. Many have not returned. The Sith hunt the Jedi down like animals, ambushing and assassinating our brothers wherever they are found. We fear it is only a matter of time until they discover even this hidden refuge. Other Jedi have fallen from the light and embraced the dark side, giving their allegiance to the Sith and Malak, their dark lord. Jedi are turning to the dark side? Lie, do not fear, masters, I will not fall. <coughs> How can he be stopped? Jedi are turning to the dark side? The lure of the dark side is not easy to resist. Malak's power grows as more and more planets fall to his conquering armies. 
If Malak is not stopped, the Republic will fall, and the Jedi will be hunted to extinction. The galaxy will enter a time of darkness and tyranny, not seen for a thousand generations. The Council has decreed that you and Bastila must investigate the ancient ruins you dreamed of, once the Council deems you ready. Perhaps there you will find some clue, some explanation of how Revan and Malak were corrupted. And perhaps there you shall find a way to stop them. I don't know if I want to do this, it sounds dangerous. Of course, Masters, anything to further the light. I'm ready now, I accept this mission. The Force flows through you like no student we have ever seen. But you are willful and headstrong, a dangerous combination. Before we send you to investigate the ruins, you must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise, you are doomed to fail. We don't have time for this. Why? I surrender myself to the will of the Council. Two, as you wish, Master Vandar. We must begin your training at once. You have a destiny upon you that you must be prepared to face. The entire fate of the galaxy is upon you. I can only hope you will prove up to the task. The path you have chosen to walk is difficult. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands of the Order. Meditation will teach you to channel the power of the Force. To truly understand the way of the Jedi, you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek wisdom in the teachings of the great masters of our Order. The Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. You and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited and your progress amazing. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You have done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. Jedi Soon class your time. apprenticeship will end and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first, you must prove yourself worthy. What must I do to prove myself? I want to ask some questions, Master Zar. Questions about Revan and Malak. I should be going now. I want to ask some questions. Few mention those names around here anymore, but I suppose it is just as dangerous to deny they were ever part of the Order. When I was still on Coruscant, Revan and Malak often came to me for additional training. In particular, Revan's hunger to learn seemed insatiable. I should have recognized this as a warning sign. But I perceive the young Padawan's lust for knowledge as simple exuberance and eagerness. Revan was my most promising pupil, one I felt sure would someday become a champion of the Jedi Order. What happened? The Jedi Order moved too slowly for Revan and Malak. We were too cautious in their eyes. They always sought to learn far quicker than their masters felt was prudent. It is one thing to understand a lesson, but to truly comprehend it takes a wisdom that only comes with time. Several years ago, when the Mandalorian threat first arose, Revan and Malak were eager to journey to the Outer Rim to defeat the enemy of the Republic. But the Council felt it best if we moved with care and caution. The true threat, the Council feared, had not yet revealed itself. But Revan would not be dissuaded. Charismatic and powerful, it was inevitable many of the Order would flock to Revan's seemingly noble cause. Malak was the first to join his closest friend. Others soon followed, many of our youngest and brightest, intent on saving the galaxy from the Mandalorian threat. They disobeyed the Jedi Council. What happened to this noble mission? I should be going now. Two, what happened to this noble mission? They were foolish to disregard the Council's wishes. I do not know what happened to Revan, Malak, and their followers on the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim, but something corrupted them. Their ideals became twisted, their spirits were tainted, and they fell to the dark side. There is a lesson in this, a lesson you would do well to take to heart. 
The dark side can corrupt even the most noble of Jedi. I will heed the lesson, Master Zar. Yeah, yeah, get on with it. I will heed the lesson, Master Zar. You have learned much, yet there is much more for you to still understand. The way of the Jedi must be entered into with a clear and focused mind. When you feel that you are ready to continue your training, know that you can find me here. Items received and lost. That's interesting. Well, let's go ahead and talk to Zar. Still have no quests. Greetings, my young pupil. Your progress has been most remarkable so far. Are you here to continue your training in the ways of the Jedi? I'm ready to continue my training. And ask about Revan and Malak. Few mention when I, but I, the Jedi. It is several, but the but map. They were f there. Are, there. You when? Okay. Greetings, That's my the young. Same. I am ready to continue my training. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first you must prove yourself worthy in the traditions and customs of our Order, as handed down from master to pupil for a thousand generations. You must successfully complete three tests before you earn your place among the Jedi. I'm ready for the tests, Master Zara. What kind of tests are these? Let's get these tests over with. Let's ask. I like to be cautious. These tests will see if you have truly mastered the training you have been given, both mental and physical. Upon completing these tests, you will pass from apprentice to Padawan and join in the ranks of the Jedi. First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the code. Return when you feel you are ready for this challenge. Journal entry added. Jedi Trials. Dantooine. The Jedi Council on Dantooine has decided to train you in the ways of the ancient Jedi Order. After much initial training, your first task will be to learn the precepts of the Jedi Code. This code is the path by which all Jedi should lead their lives. All right. Let's go talk to the other masters. Well, maybe Bastila while we're at it. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. All right, fair enough. Let's talk to Dorak. Greetings, young apprentice. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars, the fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith. There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. Let's see. I'm eager to learn, Master Dorak. Very well, tell me the history of the Jedi. I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. Where are the Academy's archives? I don't have time for this right now. Um, very well, tell me the history of the Jedi. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our Order. The Jedi have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. We are as old as the Republic itself. Instead, I will begin 40 years ago with the War of Exar Kun. Like Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi and the Republic. Exar Kun was defeated, but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For twenty years we struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars of the terrible conflict. What does this have to do with Revan and Malak? What about the Mandalorian Wars? Twenty years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering small worlds on the Outer Rim. They were careful to choose only planets outside the Republic's jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. That sounds like a big mistake. They should have protected them, but we ended up in a war anyway. 
The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. Did the Jedi join in? What about Malak and Revan? What about Malak and Revan? The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, joined the Republic fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. So Revan did the right thing. How did Revan fall to the dark side? Where did the Sith come from? Revan and Malak were heroes, the great saviors of the Republic. A third of the Republic fleet was under their direct command. And then something happened. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months, it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months. Scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Where did they disappear to? What happened next? Where'd they disappear to? Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. Where did Revan get the ships for the Sith fleet? How did Revan get so many followers? I don't have time for this right now. Where did Revan get the ships for the Sith fleet? Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The source of this massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. It seems impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. The source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers who had served under Revan. With each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us, lured by Sith promises of riches and power. So what happened next? How can anyone hope to stop the Sith? What happened next? For two years, the Sith were all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle meditation allowed the Republic to win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan, as you probably know. She was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. What can I learn from Revan's history? Don't worry, I'll find a way to stop the Sith. Where are the Academy's archives? What can I learn from Revan's history? Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. I will think on this, Master Dorak. Where are the Academy's archives? This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of Master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble goal but there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may need if we hope to defeat Malak and the Sith. 
Revan's. I will think on this, Master Doric. May the Force be with you. All right, let's talk to Vandar. Vandar took care. Good Tokar evening, Hill. apprentice. I trust your training goes well. My training is progressing quite well. I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. I'd like to ask you some questions. My training is progressing quite well. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. May the Force be with you, Apprentice. Good evening, Apprentice. I'd like to ask you some questions. A Jedi must ever be seeking knowledge. What is it you wish to know? What can you tell me about Bastila? Bastila will be a great Jedi someday. Even among the Masters and the Council, it is rare to find one so skilled in the art of battle meditation. Bastila was there when Revan was slain. Did you know that? I had no idea. Karth mentioned something about it. Bastila herself does not like to talk about it. She was accompanying the strike team that confronted Revan when the Dark Lord was destroyed. Her role in the death of such a promising young Jedi as Revan upset her greatly. But Bastila knew she had to set her personal feelings aside for the sake of the galaxy and the Republic. The Force is strong with her now. And without her skill in battle meditation, we would have lost this war long ago. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. And for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Is there anything else you would like to know? Is there anything you can tell me about Revan and Malak? I knew Revan as a promising young pupil. Revan was strong in the Force, but also headstrong and proud. Such traits are not unusual in a Padawan. Perhaps that was why I did not see the true extent of the danger. Many of the young Jedi admired Revan, including Malak. When Revan set off to challenge the Mandalorians, Malak was the first to join the cause. And they beat my people so easily in battle. And when Revan fell to the dark side, it was inevitable Malak would fall as well. So Revan was stronger than Malak? Are you saying Revan was responsible for Malak's fall? Revan was always the leader, the more powerful of the pair. When Revan fell, we had hoped the Sith threat was ended. But Malak quickly assumed Revan's role and has embraced the dark side power as fully as his old master ever did. Now, Malak leads the Sith Armada against the Republic. Hate and vengeance for his master's death draw Malak ever further down the path of the dark side, fueling his powers until they surpass those of his old master. Only you and Bastila together can stop Malak now. The way ahead will be diff- Is there any- Master Vruk doesn't seem to like me very much. Master Vruk may seem harsh and critical, but he understands the dangers that lie in your path. He wants you and Bastila to be fully prepared when you finally face Lord Malak. The way ahead will be- Is there any- I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. All Jedi must know the Code. Its tenets are the fundamental teachings of our Order. Think and meditate on these truths, Apprentice. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. I have faith that you will achieve the rank of Padawan soon. Journal entry added. Jedi Trials. The Jedi Council on Dantooine has decided to train you in the ways of the ancient Jedi Order. After much initial training, your first task will be to learn the precepts of the Jedi Code. This code is the path by which all Jedi should lead their lives. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. Let's talk to Vruk before we head back to Zar. Vruk Lamar. I see you insist on wandering the halls of our enclave when you should be busy studying your lessons. My training is going well. It appears that soon you will achieve the rank of Padawan. Master Jar is most impressed with your progress. But I cannot help but wonder if you move forward too quickly. I see you in... 
I would like to ask some questions. I suppose such desires are inevitable, though I fear you may seek knowledge for which you are not prepared. Yet I will do my best to guide your quest. What can you tell me about Bastila? Bastila, the young Jedi holds great promise and great danger. She can do much for both the Republic and the Council. Without her skill in battle meditation, the Sith Armada would have conquered the galaxy long ago. But despite her command of the Force, Bastilla is still young. She is a Jedi, but she has not attained the rank of Master. The Council would do well to remember this before we lay the fate of the galaxy on her slender shoulders. You would do well to focus more closely on your lesson. The Force is strong with you, but you need training and guidance in the ways of the Jedi, lest you suffer a fate similar to that of Revan. I see you... I... Is there anything you can tell me about Revan and Malak? Revan was once a promising Padawan, but ever eager to learn more about the Force. Revan sought knowledge of ancient Sith magics, foolishly ignoring the dangerous lure of the dark side. When the Mandalorian invasion came, Revan seized the opportunity it presented. Many Jedi flocked to the Outer Rim to follow the charismatic young knight. And many fell under the sway of the dark side. What happened on the Outer Rim to corrupt Revan? I do not believe Revan and Malak were corrupted on the Outer Rim. They had begun their journey down the Dark Path long before the Mandalorian threat appeared. Here on Dantooine, they discovered a sinister cave, a place where the strength of the dark side overwhelms the light. Perhaps this discovery was what first corrupted them. Or perhaps they sought the cave out because they were already corrupted. Whatever the explanation, the Order was unable to turn them back to the light. Had the Council taken more decisive action in this matter, perhaps Revan and Malak could have been stopped. But in this we failed. You would do well to... I see you... I... You often seem angry with me, Master Fook. Have I displeased you? If you find me overly critical, perhaps it is because you do not fully understand what is at stake. For 15,000 years, the Republic has brought peace and stability to the galaxy. Now the Republic may be destroyed because we, the Jedi, have failed them. Revan and Malak were paragons of the ideals the Order seeks to uphold. Yet they succumbed to the temptations of the Dark Side. When Revan fell, Malak took up the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith. Should Malak be stopped, what is to stop another Jedi from taking his place? This is the burden we Masters must carry. Only through strict training and relentless lessons can we prevent the Dark Master from being reborn. That is why the Order can brook no failure in our apprentices and pupils. That is why I can accept nothing but perfection from you. You would do... I see you... I seek knowledge of the Jedi Code. You do not know the Jedi Code? Without knowledge of those doctrines, all your training will be for naught. All Jedi must know the Code. Its tenets are the fundamental teachings of our Order. There is no emotion. There's peace. There's no ignorance. There's knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. Learn these truths, apprentice, or we shall all regret the decision to accept you into the Order. All right. Well, let's try Dorak again, just because there was one thing I didn't ask him. Greetings, young apprentice. As chronicler, you should... Don't worry, I'll find a way to stop the Sith. Your confidence is admirable, but you must guard against pride and arrogance. These lead to the dark side. Revan's tale shows us how... Alright, let's go back to Zar. We're good for now. Zar Leston. He's got a last name. Greetings, my young pupil. You're pr I'm ready to continue my training. Soon your apprenticeship will... In the traditions and customs... I'm ready for the tests, Master Sar. These tests will see if you have... First, I will test your knowledge of the Jedi Code. These tenets must always guide your actions. In everything you do, 
you must always be conscious of their wisdom. You must now prove you have a Jedi's understanding of the Code by completing these fundamental precepts of our Order. There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the Force. You have learned your studies well, Apprentice. It will not be long before you are a full member of our Order. But first, you must pass the second test and learn about the most prized possession of a Jedi. The very symbol of our Order. The lightsaber. The lightsaber is the traditional weapon of our Order. It is a symbol of a Jedi's skill, dedication, and authority. And each lightsaber is as individual as the Jedi who wields it. The blade is made of pure energy, focused by polished crystals in the hilt. As the second test, each Jedi must construct his lightsaber with his own hands. And now it is your time. Speak with Master Dorak, and he will guide you through the choosing of a crystal. 200 experience, journal entry added. Jedi Trials. Having completed the first trial, your second task to become a Jedi is to speak to Master Dorak and determine what sort of path within the Order you wish to follow. Alright, Dorak, what's up? Ah, you have come, young apprentice, at Master Zar's bidding. He sees great promise in you, as do I. The time has come for you to choose the color of your lightsaber. This color also reflects your demeanor and position within the Order. What colors are there? What positions are there? Why do I get set with a single color? Uh, what positions are there? Blue is the color of the Jedi Guardian. This Jedi battles against the forces of evil and the dark side. They focus more on combat training and use of the lightsaber. Yellow is the color of the Jedi Sentinel. This Jedi ferrets out deceit and injustice, bringing it to light. They focus less on combat and more on other skills and abilities. Green is the color of the Jedi Consular. This Jedi seeks to bring balance to the universe. They mediate between other groups, using their powers to end conflict and preserve peace. I want to be a Jedi Consular. Indeed. We shall see. I will now ask you questions, and your responses will indicate which class you lean most towards. A woman and her small child are beset by a desperate-looking group of thugs. They're menacing her with weapons, and she screams to you for help. What do you do? Help them flee. Attack the thugs. <clears throat> Stop the thugs and find out why they are attacking her. That one. Mm, indeed. Very well. On to the next question. You are in combat with a dark Jedi allied with the Sith. There is a pause in the combat. What do you do? Attack him again. Find out why you turned to the dark side and try to turn him. Try to see a weakness in his technique. Find out why you turned. Yes, I suspected as much. Now for the next question. There is a locked door, and your goal lies on the other side. What do you do? Smash the door down, try to pick the lock. Knock. I'm gonna knock. I am beginning to see a pattern here, Apprentice. I have a feeling about what you would be best at. But first, the final question. You are the head of an enclave on a contested world. The Dark Jedi have infiltrated and are causing unrest across the planet. What do you do? Hunt them down, try to lure them out into a trap, coordinate with the planetary government to identify the infiltrators. That one. Yes, I thought as much. As I suspected, you would be most suitable as a Jedi Consular. Which color and path do you believe yourself most suited to, Apprentice? Green, the path of the Jedi Consular. Here is a green crystal for your lightsaber. Go speak to Master Jar again and he will instruct you on how to construct it. Journal entry added. Items received. Jedi Consular, level 5. Here we go. Okay. Everything into Persuade. It's a class skill now, you'll notice. And then, <clears throat> uh, Repair is still a class skill. I'm gonna put the rest of my points into that. 
and uh, well, you'll see why. It has to do with uh, another character, HK-47. Okay, feats. You have been granted the following feats this level. Weapon Proficiency Lightsaber, Jedi Defense, Force Focus, Jedi Sense, Force Sensitive. Now let's look at our new feats, first of all. Weapon Proficiency Lightsaber. We saw that on Bastila's page. We saw Jedi Defense with Bastila. Force Focus is new. Prerequisites, Jedi Consular. This feat adds plus one to the difficulty class for all saving throws against the character's force powers. This feat is always active. Improved Force Focus. Prerequisites level six, Jedi Consular. This feat adds plus two to the difficulty class for all saving throws against the character's force powers. This feat is always active. This feat replaces Force Focus. Master Force Focus. Prerequisites level 12, Jedi Consular. This feat adds plus four to the difficulty class for all saving throws against the character's force powers. This feat is always active. This feat replaces improved force focus. Jedi Sense, Knight Sense, and Master Sense we've read. Force Sensitive. Unique ability, main character Jedi. Jedi training affects each Padawan uniquely, allowing them to grow in ability while addressing personal flaws. On rare occasions, however, Exceptional individuals open doors to strengths they did not know they had. This feat represents a heightened connection to the Force previously unseen in newly trained Jedi. This feat grants 40 additional Force points to the character's base total. So, <clears throat> for lightsaber battles, I really want, uh, I want improved flurry. I want improved, uh, and, Im and I want improved dueling. I'm going to get improved dueling first. Actually, no. I'm going to do improved flurry first. So I don't know how many I'm going to get, and master flurry is uh, more important. Powers. I get two powers to start off with. I can't take cure yet. And we've already read about them all, so I will take burst of speed. And... I'll take Effect Mind. Alrighty. Now everyone has leveled up. Jedi Trials. Having completed the first trial, your second task to become a Jedi is to speak to Master Doric and determine what sort of path within the Order you wish to follow. You have received your lightsaber crystal and become a Jedi Consular. You must return to Master Jar and complete your training. Lightsaber crystal, green. Special upgrade item lightsaber, blade color green. A faceted crystal used in the constructing of a lightsaber. It glows faintly with an inner green light. Alright. First, let's level up Candorous. I'm going to give him Dexterity. Skills, treat injury. Feats. I'm interested in Master Toughness. I'll give him that to start off with. Zalbar. His attributes, I'm going to give him more Strength. Skills, we'll do Repair and Demolitions. You've been granted the following feats this level. Implant level 3. Nice. And main character. Skills. Persuade. Always. Powers. Uh, we're going to take Cure this level. That one's kind of a no-brainer. Level up again. Skills. Persuade. Always persuade. We got a new feat. Can't do Master Flurry yet. I could do... Worthy feats would be Conditioning. Weapon Focus Lightsaber, Improve Toughness, and the one that really matters, Improve Dueling. Powers. I'm going to get one this level. I will take Force Push. Take Wisdom. Always Wisdom. Always Persuade. One power this level. 
Drain life, force suppression, shock, fear, slow, wound, stun droid, stun, dominate mind. I'll do that one. I'm all about that persuasion. Level up. Skills, persuade. Powers. I get two this level. We can get night speed. Just kind of a no-brainer. Force resistance is a really solid choice. I'm going to take... Yeah, I'm going to take force resistance. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Let's go talk to Zar now. Ah, good. Now that you have selected your crystal, we shall begin the construction of your lightsaber. Power crystal. Feats required. Weapon proficiency. Lightsaber. Damage, energy, 2 to 16, critical threat, 19 to 20 times 2. Traditionally associated with the Jedi, the lightsaber is a devastating weapon difficult to master. Properties can vary with the type of focusing crystal used in construction. Alright, I got no extras. Items received, items lost. Show enough, there it is. Now, a lot of my force powers are actually restricted by armor. So I need to be careful about that. We can go ahead and speak to Zar again. Although now um, we can actually do a bunch of party member dialogues. So let's do that. Yeah, those what do you want? Do you know anything about this world? From what we saw from space, this world doesn't have a lot of people. I couldn't really have found much work here anyway, so I never had an interest. It looks like a farm world. The Republic has thousands of these places. Ones that get by farming crops and hunting herds of native beasts. But I might have underestimated this place. It seems to be more than I thought. You have anything else you want to ask? I was wondering if you had any more war stories. I was one of the best youth warriors in the Clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. What was your story? I would have harnessed that power sooner. How barbaric. What was your story? I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor. Linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me. My heart racing with fear of the coming battle. I didn't think Mandalorians got afraid. Huh, so Mandalorian you were. What happened next? The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. You dropped from orbit riding a droid? Those droids sure are something. Who are you fighting anyway? Number one. The exhilaration. The euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. That's horrible. That was some fight. I want a basilisk war droid. That was some fight. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. 
but I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? Nothing more for now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Journal entry added. Candorous. Candorous told you about what it's like to drop through the atmosphere in one of the Mandalorian's basilisk war droids. From what he said, they must have been fearsome weapons. He would probably tell you more stories if you talk to him later. One thing I did realize is I actually need to switch back to clothing for now because a lot of my force powers are restricted by armor. Exciting, I know. Uh, let's go back to the Ebon Hawk right quick. Oh, well, transit is disabled. Okay, that's fine. I will just, uh, I will sub Zalbar out for mission because we can have a couple more conversations with her now. And I'll level her up too. Ooh, look how light side I am. Skills. Same array as before. You've been granted the following feats this level. Sneak attack four. Oh. Sneak attack four. Prerequisites level seven. Scoundrel. Sneak Attack 4 adds 4 to 24 points of extra damage to attacks when the target can't respond to the attacker. The extra damage is applied to attacks made from behind the target, attacks against stunned or otherwise immobilized targets, and any attacks made while in stealth mode. Combat cancels stealth mode, but the first attack receives the bonus. Sneak Attack only works if the target is within 10 meters. The extra damage is not multiplied in the case of a critical hit. Uh, also, now that my main character is done using blasters, uh, we'll give... Bendix fully modified blaster to mission. Replace the heavy blaster she had. Level her up again. Dexterity. Usual set of skills, hold one point. New feats, nice. Um, I'm gonna give her Master Dueling. That seems most worthy. Sneak Attack 5, prerequisites level 9 Scoundrel. Sneak Attack 5 adds 5 to 30 points of extra damage to attacks when the target can't respond to the attacker. The extra damage is applied to attacks made from behind the target, attacks against stunned or otherwise immobilized targets, and any attacks made while in stealth mode. Combat cancels stealth mode, but the first attack receives the bonus. Sneak Attack only works if the target is within 10 meters. The extra damage is not multiplied in the case of a critical hit. And Sneak Attack 6 prerequisites level 11 Scoundrel. Sneak Attack 6 adds 6 to 36 points of extra damage to attacks when the target can't respond to the attacker. The extra damage is applied to attacks made from behind the target, attacks against stunned or otherwise immobilized targets, and any attacks made while in stealth mode. Combat cancels stealth mode, but the first attack receives the bonus. Sneak Attack only works if the target is within 10 meters. The extra damage is not multiplied in the case of a critical hit. All right, Master Dueling, very good. All right, and now we can dialogue yes. with her a couple times. Let's do that. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Terrace. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there, and now it's, it's, it's just gone. Malik will pay for what he did, Mission. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Terrace is a wasteland, get over it. Too. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. I don't really think there's anything you can say. I just have to find some way to deal with it, I guess. It'll take some time. Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just, it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malik, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess that's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. All right. I also wanted to check what armor I have her in, because her dexterity bonus is currently at four. So yeah, it's not being negatively impacted by her armor, which is good. Sure. We can talk to her one more time. Hey there, what can I do for you? Do you know anything about the planet we're on? I'm not the one you should ask about Dantooine. I didn't even know there was a Jedi Academy here. I always thought it was just a bunch of settlers and farmers. Sorry I can't be more help, you know? Is there anything else I can do for you? I want to talk to you about your brother. I'm sorry for the way I acted before. 
It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little fucked <coughs> up. Why do you hate her so much? What did she do to you? I don't have time for this. What did she do to you? My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. You mean no matter how much he stole, did Lena dump him? I don't have time for this. Did Lena dump him? I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. Seems like a bad idea to insult him. Sounds like you're jealous. Maybe she actually liked Griff. So what happened? I don't have time for this. Maybe she actually liked Griff. I saw Lena for what she really was. A busty, credit-grubbing cantina rat. She used Griff and took away the only family I had. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were gonna try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits he'd come back and get me, and we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. How is this Lena's fault? Maybe something happened to him. Sounds like he deserted to you. Sounds like he deserted you. We should get back to the job at hand. How's this Lena's fault? Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff butt good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? That's as far as we need to take it with her, and her side quest will now trigger when the time comes. Nothing. Never mind. Okay. Have it your way. Okay. Now, we can go talk to Zar again. Third trial time. You have done extremely well in constructing your lightsaber, Apprentice. Your crystal seems to have been set perfectly. It is rare indeed for that to happen the first time one constructs their lightsaber. These crystals are very rare, found only in certain caves strong in the Force. By adding crystals to your lightsaber, you can alter or enhance its properties. There have even been unconfirmed rumors of certain Force-sensitive caves here on Dantooine that may hold these crystals. I can find crystals on Dantooine? What will these crystals do for me? Should I know anything else about lightsabers? I can find crystals on Dantooine? It is a rumor only. I do not know if there's any truth in it, but you must learn first to use your lightsaber and take care when drawing it. Your lightsaber identifies you as a member of the Jedi Order. With such recognition comes honor and respect, and the attentions of dangerous enemies. The Sith and Dark Jedi will seek to destroy you, Apprentice. And you must prove yourself worthy in battle against a foe who also wields a lightsaber. Are you ready to face the final challenge, Apprentice? I'm ready to face the third trial. For every Jedi, the threat of the dark side is always present. You must truly understand this before you are accepted into the Order. You must see the corruption of the dark side for yourself. Even here on Dantooine, there are places where the dark side holds sway, twisting and tainting nature itself. The ancient grove once used for deep meditation by the Jedi is now tainted. A wave of darkness perverts the region around it. The Cath Hounds in the area have become savage and ruthless. They have become a threat to the settlers. A threat the Jedi have promised to stop. What would you have me do, Master Zar? You want me to go kill Cath Hounds? What's causing this corruption? Number three. The Cath Hounds are but a symptom of the true problem. You must journey into the grove and confront the true source of the darkness. That is your task. Do you have no other guidance? You know more than you're telling me. I can say no more. Some things you must see for yourself. None of the other Jedi at the Academy are permitted to help you in this task. But remember this, my young apprentice. A Jedi acts with patience and care, and those on the Dark Path are not always lost forever. The Dark Side still taints the ancient grove. Your lessons cannot continue until the spreading corruption of the dark side has been stopped. 
this is your task, apprentice. May the force be with you. Journal entry added. 200 experience received. Jedi Trials. You must cleanse a meditation grove to the southeast of the dark taint that has been infesting it. The exact nature of the cause of the taint has not been made clear. The dark side still taints the ancient grove. Okay. Let's try talking to Bastila. If you have questions, you should direct. Dorak? Will any of them talk to me? Let's find out. Greetings, young apprentice. As chronicler, you should. May the force. Not from him. Good evening, apprentice. My training is progressing quite well. I have faith that. Nothing from him. Group. I see you insist on. Nope. <laughs> Okay. We are finally allowed to leave the Enclave, I believe. I'll head over to the Eastern Door just to be sure of that. And considering this episode is nearly two hours <laughs> long, um, I believe that'll be a very good stopping point for us. The Council has decreed you may come and go as you please. The Council has right. decreed you may... out to the courtyard. Before I forget, I'm going to submission out and put Zalbar back in. He's just way more useful in a fight. And with that, we're finally going to save once again. This has been Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. We got through a Pazox log, and much more importantly, we are finally a Jedi, we're done holding levels, and our main character is actually going to be viable in combat! How exciting! Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to discuss this or any of my other content, the best place is my Discord server. That link's in the video description. And if you want to support me or the channel, the best way, apart from liking and subscribing, is through my Patreon page. That link is also in the video description. Uh, my Patreon supporters get to nominate and vote for the games they would like to see played on the channel. KOTOR itself is one such game, currently in that slot. Once a game is selected, I play through all the way to the end, and then I have my supporters choose another. A pretty simple, straightforward process. If you want to get involved, you have that option. Regardless, I really do appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm grateful to you for watching, I really am. And... I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.